Hello, welcome to 9 is 10 After Party, and yeah, no, before you ask, the mini rolls have already gone, but we still have some of those little chunks of pineapple on the end of cocktail sticks stuck inside what looks like a Cyber Matt's arse, but it's not. It's a watermelon <laughs> covered in tin It's a great way to start. <laughs> it's, it's, it's how everything should start, I think. Uh, this week, we're taking a dive into the past and the future, uh, avoiding 2005 altogether like a plague, <laughs> except not in spirit, because we are delving into the worlds of the second and the eleventh Doctor, and more specifically, quite frankly, as far as I'm concerned, and I might be a little bit biased, the second best tribute... I'm kidding, it's the best. <laughs> the single best celebration of the 10th anniversary of the show coming back, which was a fantastic audio, which you can find on YouTube, called Two-ish Doctors. Uh, with me today, uh, not physically, because I'm, I'm recording this in a very small cupboard, not, that's not the sounds truth. Very it could small. Be. sounds like a very small cupboard. It sounds like the tiniest of cupboards. I am joined by uh, stars of the two-ish Doctors, the second Doctor, not Patrick Troughton, although the next best thing, I'm telling you. <laughs> Mr. Christopher Thompson, hello, Christopher. Hello. Hello, darling. Welcome to Nine is Ten. Uh, have you, is your chair comfortable? Is it? Yeah, yeah, it's fine, yes. <clears throat> Sorry, I'll, uh, do you want to be as me as or, or me? <laughs> Literally, bring... 60 seconds in and he's done it. He couldn't wait, could you? 60 seconds is all it took. I, you could have kept him waiting. You could have, you know, no, oh no, I'll start doing Patrick Troughton before I said, this is my version of Patrick Troughton and it is truly horrific. <laughs> and the devil there on Chris's shoulder is Mr. Tom Reese K. Hello. Uh, AKA Matt Smith from the Twitch Doctors. Hello, Tom. He's, Hello. Is Matt not with you then? Is he not here? I'm not going to even... <laughs> I'm not going to even. It will, I'm not going to tell you when, but I will. I might just answer a question in the guise of Matt Smith. Um, I think. <laughs> I think that my Matt Smith impression is more key on the fact that I pull the the face and the frown that he does. So, on on audio, it's not as great. But it, if you lean into your fun. microphone, we may pick up on the forehead crinkle. <laughs> you probably hear the creases in my face. <laughs> 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 uh, in case people are wondering, the Tourish Doctors is not just the sounds of Chris talking like Pat and Tom's, Tom's crinkly face. <laughs> The Although microphone. all the rushes in between and all the uh, outtakes were pretty much just Chris going, oh, sorry, sorry, and me just crinkling <laughs> my face. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was. <laughs> so, outtakes in both physical and audible character then. I mean, I've, I've aged. I'm actually now closer to Richard Herndl than I am Matt Smith, judging by the amount of crinkles <laughs> on my face. Oh, you look, you look like Matt during the the great big whopper stage of that final story. <laughs> it's not the best quote, is it, Chris? <laughs> it's, well, I don't know. It's certainly one of the highlights of Time of the Doctor for me. <laughs> Matt and his great big whopper. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, oh, happy well, Christmas, that, kids. <laughs> that, that should have been the title in our own respect. <laughs> whopper of the Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> But now that we've set the tone twice... Uh... <laughs> it's all downhill I'm... from here, and it's only just started. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to avoid spoilers at first, and that okay. gives you people out there in the land of uh, ears and sounds and listenings and stuff to pause this darn thing and go and watch it. The link will be in the description on SoundCloud and YouTube. But really, you should have already watched it, because if you've not, you're not my friend. Well, well go, we, we go. hope that they've watched it. If they haven't, then we'll forgive them if they watch it. No, don't, don't be like that. Tell okay. Them, if you haven't watched it, what are you doing here? And I don't want to know you, all right? <laughs> oh, okay, I said, I said don't forgive them. I didn't say insult oh, them sorry. and make them cry. <laughs> well, my subscribers are gone. Great. See you later, guys. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll get them back. We'll get them back. Because before we hit spoiler territory, mm. let's just delve mm -hmm. into the basics. Who kicked this one off? It was oh. you, Tom, pretty much. Yeah, it was me and... Guy Lambert, star of Nine Is Ten, previous one that probably <laughs> you you edited it down to the the size of an episode, but I'm sure you two spoke for half a decade before you edited. <laughs> um, Guy said Guy said he wanted to. to well, I, initially I said to Chris, let's do something in regards to Matt Smith, my Matt Smith impression, and Chris's Patrick Troughton impression, and that was just sort of thrown out there. And then I said to Guy, oh, you know, I'd mentioned to Chris about it because Chris did. Uh, the glimpse, which was amazing, uh, this sort Thank of you. amazing <laughs> audio 
adventure with him and the first Doctor. Um, and you did one before that. You did one with uh, Peter Capaldi as well, which was really good. Yes, I did, yes. Um, yes, yes, I did, yes. <laughs> uh, so Guy said, um, as, and I saw Guy today, and we both agreed that he's gradually turning into uh, Russell T. Davis mixed with a hint of John Nathan Turner. Because <laughs> he's doing this, whenever I speak to him about the Tourist Doctors or any project, he does this weird twisty hand thing, and he goes, yes, well, it's fabulous and amazing and lovely. <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong with you? You're turning into Russell T. Davis. <laughs> he goes, well, you know, it's lovely and, and all this and, and, and oh, yes, and oh, yes, Tommy K with your face. And that's pretty much how he's talking now. <laughs> um, so, sorry, guy, he's going to be listening to this. Sorry, guy. Don't sound like that. <laughs> I, can, I can vouch for that being a pretty damn accurate impression, actually. Um, um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's how it came about. I'm not saying anything. I've only recently met the man. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> so, so it started. It started in terms of um, this. The genesis of this one. Mm, uh, mm. It started uh, sort of most recently with the glimpse. Then, uh, Chris, how did that one come about? That's a, that's a miniature adventure taking place over about two minutes of time in which the first and second Doctor's TARDIS sort of collide, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, it was well. I did. I did like a uh, Troughton popping briefly into meet Capaldi, and then uh, eventually. Mm. Uh, Siobhan Gallaghan said I can do the first and then the idea was just there in that one evening over a few beers as I tend to write <laughs> uh, I managed, We just I wrote it sent it to him, woke up in the morning he that's, loved it it's lovely it. Chris that you've also admitted that only alcoholism can fuel your creativity <laughs> <laughs> it, it, well, after it, a few beers fueling. which is how I write most things in fact <laughs> Well, three, well, when Benji and me did Freedom of the Daleks, that, that took us a, a few days. <laughs> and we were it, absolutely pissed. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't get the narrative, it's because we couldn't see straight. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we have the Doctor meet a massive Brillo pad? <laughs> yeah! Go for it! <laughs> I'll be honest, when I was sent the script, because I, wor I worked... Um, on the the uh, red snow, which was I think was that the first time Tunnel Media that, second Doctor yeah. story. It was it was originally just a one off. It was just uh, I wanted to do the do. I thought, can I do the voice? And had a go at writing it, and just wanted it to be a Christmas thing on my channel. But then my editing skills are nothing compared to what Benji Clifford can do. So I asked him if he'd like to have a go, and he edited it, took just basically took it from me and made it into something better. I'm worried about how much he was drinking during the writing of that one, though, because when he sent me the scripts, oh, it's... it was just scribbled on in crayon and then scanned sort of haphazardly into oh, the side why of the is it on, Why is it on the back of a crisp packet? Well, you know, it was the only way to get to you. <laughs> it was over a Guinness beer mat, actually. <laughs> oh, was it? Yeah. 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 Other, was... other ales and alcoholic beverages are available. <laughs> but they're not as good. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, so I, I, um, yes, I just like to say, drink responsibly, kids. Uh, yes, otherwise, you'll end up like Chris talking like Patrick Troughton for half of your life. <laughs> this is how. This is the method of Chris the isn't <laughs> actually very good at doing a Patrick Troughton impression. That's oh, just yeah. Chris's voice when he gets absolutely <laughs> drunk. <laughs> It's yeah. like, Chris, you're amazing, when in fact he's done a couple of shots and then all of a sudden... I mean, Chris sober, Chris is actually half... He's sort of tipsy now, which is Chris's normal voice. But when Chris is sober, he sounds exactly like Colin Baker, surprisingly. <laughs> so I'm hoping by the end of this, Chris, you'll have sobered up and you'll have sounded like Colin Baker, like your true self. <laughs> Oh. Sorry, everyone. Real life, re real life regeneration, kids. That's how it happens. <laughs> Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> so twelve, twelve meets two, and uh, two meets one. Getting to two meeting eleven mm. comes about from off the back of the glimpse. Um, where did the story originate? Uh, from what I've from what I've heard from a, a, a wise old source, um, <laughs> which well, is guy's like, least favorite nickname. <laughs> it's only guy because um, there's only three of us that put. Well, I didn't actually do much to it in the writing. I left you two to it. Well, yeah, we. I sort of did the. Well, no, I say guy always says that I did the main plot, and I kind of did. I did. It was set originally in the TARDIS with Patrick coming through 
a crack in time into the TARDIS. But then Guy pointed out that that was very much like the Peter Capaldi thing that you did, Chris, because that was yeah, that was Hartnell and Capaldi in, in the TARDIS. So Guy said, why don't you have it set on Trenzalore? Because then you've got the crack in time link there. So that's then I wrote a really, really like in, in 25 minutes rough draft of it. Then Guy fine-tuned it. And then finally we sent it to Chris to sort of, we called it Troutify it. <laughs> because because i'm not after a few after a few lagers <laughs> after a few <laughs> basically i went around to i went around to chris's house and got him blind drunk and then read him the script <laughs> word by word and he then translated it for me into what patrick Troughton would say um <laughs> just leaning over to you going no one else is doing what we're doing and you're like, that's right chris <laughs> well done chris have, have another whiskey you're getting to john pertwee <laughs> Yeah, right, well, uh, quite. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have three meeting three in the near future. <laughs> Chris is just going to give up. He's run out of options of doing other doctors meet other doctors. He's just going to have Trout and talking to himself in the mirror. <laughs> it's, it, it probably will be, yeah. <laughs> and actually, well, well, actually, my next step is to try and do Salamander. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's a great idea, but I've just got this image of you combing your hair over just to differentiate the voice. Well, that is what I'll do, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want you to ring up like one of those phone in chat lines where they're like, call now. And you're like, oh, that'd be amazing. Ring a tele shopping channel, a salamander. <laughs> I'd, I'd... I like what you have on sale. <laughs> But I would prefer it if... Uh, I, I don't know, I cannot work this out. Uh, I don't even know what his main scheme was anymore. I really don't. What was it doing? Causing volcanoes? <laughs> what a prat. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh God, so nine, is, nine is ten, great, brilliant. Right, we've, we've covered the fact very that... very good in my throne, you know? <laughs> you just sound like Gru from Despicable Me. <laughs> <laughs> Could we have Salamander say three sleepy kittens, please? Um. <laughs> three sleepy kittens. Ah, there we go. See, now we can all go to bed. <laughs> We've officially been read a bedtime story by Salamander. Uh, oh my God, this is the worst uh, thing because we all will just procrastinate and then nine is ten gets forgotten and we end up talking about Salamander calling a telly shopping channel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Tom, you jest, but this will be the follow-up to 9 is 10. <laughs> Salamander shopping. Welcome to 10 is 11. <laughs> <laughs> 10 is leathered at this point. Just yeah. like, keep layering it on. We're going to feed as many drinks to Chris as we can and see how many doctors we can get before he passes out. Tom, bring the funnel. Uh, <laughs> we're going <laughs> arse <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. <clears throat> you are just a little performing monkey, aren't you, Chris? I'm someone who sits alone and just hopes for company. <laughs> so So this is actually this is actually on topic, which is uh, which is very good. But when so when <laughs> so when the two ish doctors was gonna be released, the day that it was gonna be released, uh, Chris had all the files. And Chris very very <laughs> unfortunately uh, had a bout of appendicitis, which it was obviously not good for Chris. And I know that Guy was with you, Chris Johnson. I'm going to have to, there's too many Chris's. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and Guy was texting me saying, have you spoken to Chris? Because we were like, we bigged up that Two-ish Doctors was going to be going out seven o'clock, sort of the original broadcasting time of Rose. Mm. Uh, and he was like, have you heard from Chris? I was like, no, have you? And he was like, no, he's got the files. And we were like, what are we going to do? And then, <laughs> and then when you finally got in contact and went, sorry, we've got appendicitis, me and Guy were like, oh, thank God. Because <laughs> we were like, at least we know where he is. <laughs> and, then you were, and, then, and then it was a case of, can we get the files? We don't, you know, are you, I'll be, of course, yeah, sorry, we forgot. Are you okay? Um, but can we get the files? <laughs> so then when, um, when, when it came out, me and Guy were busy tweeting about it, but Chris was, Chris was sort of <clears throat> dosed off your face, weren't you? So that's why I'm not surprised in the hospital you weren't talking to the nurses like Troughton going, oh, I'm on YouTube, <laughs> don't you know? That's right, have some more morphine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've had yeah. my appendix out. This my Patrick Trout was horrific. 
That was no, it was so it was so random and bizarre. I, I just went from the whole day of not knowing what's going on, then being operated on, and then afterwards being even more confused about what was going on. It was essentially a sitcom plot come to life. It's it's the big presentation at work, and you get stuck <laughs> in traffic behind like a teddy bear van that spilled out all over the motorway, <laughs> and there are toddlers cuddling all the bears, so nobody cars can move, and all that. It was like. Every sort of anything that could have gone wrong, yeah. <laughs> kind of did. But well, let, let well, me, the video me... was done. <laughs> the video was done. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, Guy Bless being Guy wanted like everything he... to be spot on. There were so many changes, wasn't there, by the end of it, Chris? Yeah. But... yeah. <laughs> and he sent he sent this email, and the last email was sort of like, um, "Can we change?" It was something I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was something like, "Can we change the font of of the credits?" Which you know. He had yeah. he had his reasons, but Chris was because Chris had the like the final file. I tried to I was at work and I tried to edit it together, and I just emailed Kai and I went, "Look, this is it. This is just deal with it. This is what it's going to be. It's gonna <laughs> it's gonna go out like this." Um, but the audio had already been done, and the visuals, you know, weren't. It was just a little photo that lovely. Um, who did the photo? Was it Billy or Daniel? I can't remember now. Uh, it's Billy. The artwork, the artwork was Billy. It was Billy. Billy Tracy, yeah. Yeah. I, just, I then tried to sort of add a bit of animation to it to, so it looked like you were actually watching a video rather mm. than a still image. Um, but, yeah, Billy did most of that. But I, th- was, I think really that it was, it was... It seems to be well well received. I don't know how many views it's got now. It's got quite a few. It got to about 13,000 in... Um, in about, about three weeks? I, I don't know how yeah, long we are. Yeah, it's, like it's not been long. I mean, it actually, uh, it caught up with the glimpse. Um, and the glimpse was out about a week and a bit before that. <laughs> <laughs> so I was sort of following both of them, going, oh, which, one's, which one's ahead now? The glimpses. <laughs> but the, the two-ish really did well. <laughs> Much faster. And, uh, that was little yeah. guy tweeting his little fingers off. Yeah, old guy tweeted everyone. I, I, to be honest, I was tweeting a lot from the hospital bed. Because, um, was it, my Dropbox said that um, the amount of time... You know, I, I sent so many drafts over. Mm. Um, it got to the point that Dropbox didn't like that the bandwidth I was <laughs> yes. using. So I had uh, all my public links went down. So the only way of you getting it was stopped. And uh, when I... Was that when I was conscious, I managed to somehow get onto Dropbox. We've got, I've got this amazing do... image of you, like in the operating theatre, and me and Guy going, "Can we just get it out? You know, can't he? Can't he just use his phone whilst he's whilst oh, he's I doing did... the Patrick Troughton voice? No, you're making me good in. Oh no, I, 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 I was an impatient patient. I wanted to. I was like, oh god, I've got to do this. <laughs> so I, I tried to get Dropbox working. I eventually did. I, I just, I just. I didn't like the fact that I was just out of the game. But what the, uh, not what the listeners don't know is Chris uh, Johnson has that same sort of dedication, and he's actually uh, tweeting from a volcano at the moment, aren't you, Chris? Yes, I am currently promoting this episode as it's happening, but in the future so that it'll be promoted when people can hear it from the inside of a cubicle sat atop a mighty lava-filled mountain uh, wearing nothing but my pants. <laughs> you, you, you say that, but all I'm hearing is Stephen Moffat. And... <laughs> I'm, I'm just imagining that's that's the sort of mindset that he has. Uh, sort of, sort of you know what's amazing is if we have Peter Capaldi sat on the, uh, sat on top of a giant monoid who's just dancing through the middle of a. Yes, Stephen, we can't really do. It. No, it's going to happen. And to be honest, I'm going to make it a five-parter. <laughs> Great. That's that's season season nine done. <laughs> It's just to have him wear pajamas for the next episode. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> I was looking at my toothpaste this morning. I, th- I just thought I could look a little bit more like toothpaste. What, like the stripes? No, no. I just want to pulverise Peter into a thin white paste and spread him on a brush. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make a cracking season finale. So, uh... so uh, Stephen, what are you going to call this uh, finale? I'm going to call it Colgate Capaldi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's fantastic, Stephen. Uh, could we get Brian Minchin in here, please, with the sedative? That's fantastic, Stephen. <laughs> Lovely work. God, we're going to have work. to resort to Pip and Jane Baker. God. <laughs> Pip and Jane, Pip and Bob, well, Pip and Jane, who are Pip and Jane? 
isn't it just Bob now, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, Pip, they, just they, they wrote as a pairing. I'm sure, you know, he probably probably still has notes from, from her. It's probably included in a will. If you're going to write another Doctor Who episode, these are the parameters that you have to go against, you know? You, you must stick to these exact designs regardless of the show's current status it's, or tone. It's like, it's like Doc Brown's letter to Marty McFly from the future. <laughs> I'm writing to you from 1885, and if you're writing Trial of the Time Lords... <laughs> I'd like to. Th- I'd like to think there's a message from John Nathan Turner somewhere that just says, "Don't fuck it up." <laughs> <laughs> or Dudley said, I don't know. Somewhere along the line, like Derek Sherwin wrote it years ago on a stone tablet <laughs> <laughs> and handed it to Barry Letts, and it's just passed through generations, and it's now Stephen Moffat's table mat or something. <laughs> Chris, ask a question quick. Ask a question. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, en- I'm enjoying the. Uh, I don't know if anyone else is. That's unfolding. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> uh, the, it was essentially the fan community were the ones who I'm completely thrown <laughs> off by the notion of Stephen Moffat eating spaghetti off the top of the sacred scripture with his guidelines to the show on it. I think he used. I think <laughs> he uses film canisters as part of the Daleks as tea coasters. <laughs> Would you, have, no, you got din- have you got a dinner plate everywhere what is that accent what is wrong with my voice this evening <laughs> you, you've been overcome by the emotion of that actually being a scenario yeah. like, it's, imagine it'd, be, it'd, it'd shatter your world sir. <laughs> but that's, that is true power no, Ian, um, Ian Levine is now smashing his face against a brick wall <laughs> <laughs> So the tenth anniversary <laughs> celebrations, uh, the second ones, not the original ones. Yes, yes. Um, because we weren't alive then, or were we? We weren't. Um, <laughs> were mostly kind of held by the fans. Um, mm. Although the most, aside from a quick video of Peter Capaldi going, "Why have you cornered me and forced me to say something into this camera on my lunch break? Leave me alone." Uh, aside from that. The most official celebration that we got was the big collection of Radio Times quotes and messages from yeah. cast members and producers, uh, past and present, and writers. Um, so I suppose my question is, do you think the writers were offended that they used really unflattering shots clearly taken from their Twitter profiles <laughs> and everyone else got those <laughs> virus photos? Um, oh, God. Yeah. I, do you know what? I, I think <laughs> as much as the writers get criticised for... For not just for Doctor Who, but in, in, in anything. It's such a mm. hard job. And it's yeah. really hard for Doctor Who. And, you know, you, I get that Steve, Stephen Moffat can't please everyone. Yeah. Because there's always going to be one fan who really, really liked dinosaurs on a spaceship. Um, and all the rest of us will go, <laughs> that's lovely. Right, next. <laughs> <laughs> I I really did. <laughs> did you? Yes. Oh, you're that fan. So Chris, tell I us. am that. Hi, yeah. <laughs> no, I've sorry. I think what was that? I've completely forgotten even the episode. The episode. No, but, you literally, but... you've just now been lost in complete rage. <laughs> <laughs> but that but that lead, that leads me nicely to what I was going to say. Actually, by by sheer <laughs> seismic causality coincidence, that is nuts. Um, because ultimately, we, you know, the writers are never going to please everyone. No, right? There will always be someone uncatered to or who is looking for a fault or just yeah. simply doesn't get it that week. Um, and that's that was the, the uh, essentially the entire 10th anniversary of the show returning was that a lot of people were very disappointed that the BBC didn't do anything. Mm. Um, now, mm. admittedly, and I think it was Stephen Moffat who said it in the Radio Times thing, it it's very Doctor Who to celebrate your 10th birthday after your 50th. <laughs> but all the same, like you, you can understand why they didn't get yeah, out the bells and whistles. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, it, <laughs> uh, I, I was going to say a point. That's su- that's su- that sums it up, though. It literally <laughs> was. Everyone, ev- yeah. everyone would have loved to have seen something, but realistically they knew that it wasn't going to happen. Uh, Echo, we all know that Eccleston wasn't going to do much aside from one quote. <laughs> and the um, thing is, you know, he said people 
people criticise Eccleston, but he does. He did enjoy his time on Doctor Who, regardless of the reasons why he left, which have only yeah. which have only just come out properly, haven't they? Recently, oh, it's, it's gonna. It's the biggest thing since Watergate. It's uh, <laughs> gonna. It's gonna open the uh, you know a public inquiry. And... Let's talk about Jeffrey Beavers. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> And then he gets in touch and says, "Excuse me, why are you mentioning me off the back of that?" I'm like Jeffrey, that's not. It wasn't an implication, Jeffrey. You'll be hearing, you'll be well, hearing from my lawyers. Um, if anyone, if anyone does need to contact Jeffrey Beavers, then uh, if you just bear with me a second, his agent's details are. Hello, everyone. Jeffrey Beavers here. Um, dear points of view, if this is even points of view. I would like to complain that Thomas Rees K is reading out my personal details on nine is ten, so I'm going to talk over him instead. Now, back to the action, and I hope to see you all very soon. I'm going to say that the two-ish doctors was going to be written for Matt Smith, Patrick Trout, and and Jeffrey Beavers. So just at the end, as Patrick goes, chin up, good luck, old chap, Jeffrey just pops out and goes, is it my turn to join in now? <laughs> no, Jeffrey, no, no, just go back into the wall, just disappear. <laughs> All right, I'll see you soon. soon. <laughs> oh, dear, set up in a swing. Um, okay, <laughs> so... But the, the fans came forward for the 10th anniversary with yeah. a plum and uh, charged in uh, with a celebration. Some twazic mm. from Kids TV did a commentary thing. Um, but <laughs> apart from that, uh, it was kind of a, a trip titch, really. It was, it was known as 10. It was two-ish doctors, mm. uh, yeah. which you, you may have heard of, gents. It's, uh, it's a fantastic uh, little audio drama. That, Why would uh, I want to listen to that? It sounds like it's made by two well, bitter fans. Well, Jeffrey Beavers was nearly in it. <laughs> uh, <Jeff. laughs> Perfect. Uh, that's, that's the whole reason why I should have listened to it. Uh, was other... anyone else from Big Finish in it? You know, Katie Manning, Louise Jameson. No, no, just uh, Jeffrey Beavers almost did it. Oh, just almost did it. <laughs> almost. He got... That's going to be the caption, isn't it, on the tagline, Jeffrey Beavers was almost in this. Well, yeah, which, do you know what? When someone, when someone does the mock-up of like the DVD cover, the <laughs> yeah. printable DVD cover for Two-ish Doctors, that will be the quote the on the back. I, so good, I was Jeffrey Beavers almost was in it. And it sounds, sounds a bit blur. But, yeah, that's <laughs> ten years. Like, when Doctor Who came back, I was twelve. <laughs> And that's oh, scary. I there... was I was fourteen, and I was just so glad that someone else knew what Doctor Who was. Ditto. That was, I, that was, uh, that was I, me too. <laughs> yeah, I was just. Uh, I went through years of school being the only fan, and uh, along with a, I think a teacher as well. Actually, <laughs> uh, this knew going? what I was talking about. <laughs> was it Jeffrey Beavers? <laughs> no, <laughs> Chris. I'm so pleased you enjoy my work. Who are you? <laughs> he just holds up. He just holds up two uh, two halves of a ping pong ball with a dot drawn in the middle of both. He gads at you. Um. <laughs> I was actually. I actually. Uh, I think it was. I met. Well, I spoke to Benji for the first time the year before that. So um, that was my only way of keeping in contact with any fans back in the old days. Of I MSN was the complete messenger. opposite. I was. Obviously, he was my thing. It sounds. It's sort of a little bit selfish, but you know, I was a big fan since I was like five. So when it when it was announced it was coming back, I was excited, but I was also like, oh, that means I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to be as unique. <laughs> I was just selfish. Oh, just didn't right. want it to come back. I want like, when, like when Little Britain transferred to BBC Two from BBC Three, and you were like, hang on, there's only a few of us that know about this. Yeah, so everyone's yeah. going to know yeah. about it. And then when it went to America, you were like, well, that's it now. The world knows about it. That's the barometer on which Doctor Who needs to base all of its future decisions. If it suddenly transfers production to the States, we should probably stop it. Yeah. Uh, imagine if they did that. Imagine if they took Doctor Who to the States and it didn't quite cool. work. I mean, oh, oh. you know, you'd, they'd set it in, I don't know, San Francisco or something like that, wouldn't Pro- they? Probably at the turn of the millennium, you know. <laughs> they'd probably have Sylvester <laughs> McCoy in it for a minute, who would do probably the best bit of acting he's ever done in his life and then shoot him. <laughs> not not in the episode. They f- they would physically shoot him. <laughs> Yourself. <laughs> I'm not finished yet. Well, you know, you nearly are, aren't you? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, okay, so before we go down an even darker path, um, <laughs> uh, 
Um, uh, tiny bit of spoilers talk talk now. If you're still listening and you haven't watched Tourist Doctors, sort your life out. Pause this and go and watch it. If you're listen still listening it. in general as well, well done. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> if you're still listening, you get like the, the, the real life equivalent of a PlayStation achievement or an Xbox achievement. Well done. Um, <laughs> yes, thanks for sticking along. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for joining us. We'll see you in 16 years. Uh, but yeah, uh, spoiler territory for the Tourist Doctors. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously you guys are a bit biased because you worked on it and you're voiced in it, but how much do you really now try and imagine that interaction happens I, during Time of the Doctor slash End of um, War games? I've I've not watched uh, Time of the Doctor since. No. Um, I think... Um, I don't know. Well, there's the one thing I want to do with the glimpse. I, I don't want people to... Um, hear me do an impression i'd like them to imagine it actually happened mm. mm-hmm. and it was Troughton that they're listening to i'm the only person who um a, a complete stranger who wouldn't know it was me may get confused but me i'm, I'm you know I, I know it's me i'm trying to hide it the best way i can by making you know like it look like a missing episode and in two-ish it, it works so well in the continuity yeah i think which is and what that's i love what, the most and that's what it was a happy accident that Guy said, let's do it in Trenzalore, because then I wrote in, well, we want Patrick to come through that cracking time, but how's he going to do it? And then I remembered the whole bit at the end, obviously, when he's when he's flung into the void yeah. and he goes, no, you're making me giddy. And I just thought, that'd be amazing if you just hear that line and then it's almost like a, oh, that's that's where he went before he yeah, and ended up. It, they also sort of echo each other as well, mm. don't they? It's like... They know they're you know they're either going to die. They don't know what's going to happen next. Um, I mean, um, I'm not. I, yeah. There's looking over at the, some of the comments that people put on. As as always, Chris's Troutman is so good that it, it does. You know, it, you're well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's the only compliment you're going to get off me on this. <laughs> no, no, so that's fine. Um, <laughs> but you've you've obviously homed it in for audio, whereas my Matt Smith impression, as as Chris Johnson knows, because he I did it around Tesco's with him once, and he tried to run away from me. Um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> <story>. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lot more visual. So when I do the voice, a lot of people have commented saying, "Oh, it doesn't sound like Matt Smith," and I was like, "Well, I tried my best," and yeah, you know, it, it's like Guy said, it's just a fan thing for the love of the show. We weren't... It's it's fun. It was fun and enjoyable. We didn't make it to... Uh... I mean, I'm not awful. I mean, you know... And, no, you're not. You're not. But, <laughs> you're not awful, no. But there's I mean, you're, not, you're an awful person, but you're not. <laughs> you're just... Cheers, guys. Great chatting. So... Uh... <laughs> I'm ki- I'm kidding. You're acceptable. We just, we just had fun making it, and that was, you know, that's the mm. basis of a lot of most fan productions. It doesn't matter how good or bad it is. It's the fact that you know people have either collaborated on it or yeah. put effort in to make something fun and enjoyable. I mean, I've got fan films somewhere on a hard drive, which I won't show anyone anymore. Um, <laughs> and Because they, they are... He- horrendous, yeah. I've got they are stuff horrendous. that are just awful. Yeah, and but the fact is that we made them. I mm. mean... Tom, you were on Totally Doctor Who once upon a time. Uh, Back in with, the day. And, and I remember watching that and, uh, you know, and everyone else did. And it sort of inspired other people to do fan films. So you, you brought more attention to it. Well done. Um, you could have stopped. <laughs> a lot of, a lot, a lot, there's a lot of people that make them now. And, uh, but I, I try not to... Uh, I, I don't watch them as much as I used to. What's, but what's funny is, I, fun. in it's regards to making the fan films, I haven't done one in a while because I don't... It's a lot of time to sort of to it do is, one. It is, isn't it? Yeah. But I don't know. I just don't know if I'd be good at it anymore. I'd kind of do, I kind of... I think if I did yeah. it, I'd try and make it too... too yep. tuned tuned like i'd be like no i want it to be really yeah. really 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 good and it i don't think it'd come out like that no yeah it's but i am planning to do one just because i think it'd be quite nostalgic yeah i kind of i do one just to go hello i'm the doctor <laughs> i was well I, I had that with um because i've been for years trying to finish the ultimate conflict and managed to early this year and when that was done, it was sort of, 
that was full of nostalgia because mm. some of the footage in it was, you know, over three years worth of filming, and that was, even that was about three years ago. Chris, you were going to do one as well, weren't you? Because I remember the first time you ever spoke to me was you sent me a, a message on YouTube and you said you were planning to do a... It was right, wasn't it? You were going to do a fan series. Yeah, back in uh, 2009, I just I realised that I wasn't practically um, applying myself to anything more than sort of, you know, video logs, and I wanted to give something a bit bigger a try, mostly as, as practice to try and teach myself editing skills and, you know, mm-hmm. home directing skills and stuff. And I'd, I'd become quite a big fan of the stuff that uh, yourselves and a, a lot of our peers did at the time, and I was thoroughly enjoying it, because it was like, oh my god, brilliant, everybody's making their own stories, this oh, is look, awesome. Oh look, this guy's not hmm. doing a really weird voice as David Tennant and saying air to everything. <clears throat> hey, there. that is a classic performance. There's sir. nothing wrong uh, with pulling mm-hmm. a funny face and doing a funny voice. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that in years. Well, my my younger brother Toby still to this day, if there is an awkward silence, goes ah just to completely interrupt it. I rang. Did I ring him up? Oh no! Or did yes. he do something? I, I, he was on the phone, and I I um, Hello. I passed you How over. How's it moment. go, Ian? Yeah. <laughs> and it really confused oh, him. He was like, you remember, "Yeah, that kind of, <laughs> Chris, that kind of sounds like that guy well, from those videos." I was yeah. like, "It was Toby. <laughs> it was." Um, oh, but I, I yeah, I started work on. Um, on a, a story which I'll be honest I I don't want to say what it was because I'm still toying with the idea of doing it as like an audio oh really oh that'd be cool yeah yeah uh, I would have to tweak it because a lot of it relied especially with the creatures relied on um, the visuals mm. Mm. so I think I'd have to heavily change them uh, and based on some notes from Richard uh, pretty much destroy the second of the three episodes entirely because it was exposition heavy um, <laughs> which is sort of, I think it's sort of a curse. The, the curse of the fan film is you get the urge to mention things that everybody already knows, but just mm. so you can oh, say your yeah. doctor did it yeah. or your character said it. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, who knows? But I, I remember getting in touch with you because I think I had a, a it was a, a radio show, I think, during the story. Yeah. And I just needed, a, I just needed like a line or whatever, a couple of lines. And I thought, I'll just get in touch with some people whose stuff I watch and say like, do they want to do it? And I think I was, like, yeah, I sent you a YouTube message saying, uh, at some point, could you record some dialogue for me for a thing? And I said yes, um, and then you started working for CBBC, <clears throat> and that was that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, kind of, I kind of got stolen by auditions and then a job. And I, I remember that sort of morn where I had to email everybody, um, <clears throat> the principal cast, and just say, yeah, you know that thing where we're hopefully going to shoot over Christmas? Um, it's on completely unscheduled hiatus, yeah. and I'm not sure when that hiatus will end. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> yeah, um, maybe that was fate telling me to... Put the camera down, Christopher. Not at all. Don't do it. Otherwise we Don't look here. at it, Christopher. Well, you'll you say that, Thomas, but I still haven't put this camera down and it's hurting my arm. And, to be honest, when we filmed a little thing when I came to visit you, that never materialised, did it, Chris? <laughs> I, loved, yeah. I loved the way that when I spoke to Guy about it, I went, oh, did you get any footage from Chris? And Guy went... Yeah, well, look, I'm not going to lie to you. We were trying to think of a way of telling you that we couldn't get it to you. <laughs> and, he said, and he said, we were trying to think of a lie. And then halfway through, we thought, why are we lying to him? We just physically can't get the footage. I was like, it's fine. Don't we feel realized... like you have to lie to me. <laughs> we realised that when he was here last, I have one USB, like, you know, hard drive, little one that I, that I, that I could send out that couldn't hold sod all anything. Uh, and Guy hadn't brought anything to put it on. No. So it's like, oh, great. Well, this is going to work out just fine. Uh, for those one wondering, day. Uh, this, one is, day. This, is, this, is, uh, this is a commitment to them surfacing. Tom and I shot a very bizarre sketch involving a puppet. Uh, <laughs> well, that, yeah. <clears throat> which will see the light of day. Uh, I, it's got when to, I... purely because there's a scene where the puppet just strokes my face, I think, isn't there? Well, this, tell this you what, just gets more and more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a week after this is recording, um, Guy is paying me a visit again. I think he's got uh, a meeting, some business, some television I'll, business. I'll give, him, I'll give him my hard drive. And I'm, going, I'm going to... Oh, you're going to give him a hard drive? Oh, well, I might as well. If, if... Yeah. The, the reason why I'm going to specifics here, ladies and gentlemen at home who are a bit confused, is because you're going to have to watch these sketches because one of them 
is a recreation of a very pivotal scene. <laughs> I, from forgot, Day of the Doctor. I forgot about that. <laughs> so if you ever wanted to see a really good Eleventh Doctor impression meet a puppet that thinks it's Tom Baker, <laughs> recreate an incredibly emotional scene with little to no um, professionalism whatsoever. <laughs> I forgot. I completely forgot we did that. Well, now it has to make its way to YouTube. Oh, that's very much in the, <laughs> in guise the near of, future. That's the very much in the guise of nine is ten as well. <laughs> See, well, that's my fan film. After all this time, that's the fan film. <laughs> yes, I, just I know you don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris! Oh, blimey, Chris! You don't right. know what you're going for. <laughs> right. So, gentlemen, I've talked to you about your uh, your project. I've talked to you about. Uh, the heart and soul and passion and burst appendices that go into making uh, these projects. But let's talk turkey. Top mm. Trump's time. We're going basic. We're going simple. We're going playground rules. Sorted. Yeah. Favourite Doctor, oh. go. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Tom Baker. I've got a fe- don't oh. know why I did that as Alan Partridge. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Is he your favourite Doctor? I didn't know he was a GP. Yes, uh, well, <laughs> he's one of the candidates that never quite made it to air. <laughs> so, Tom Baker for Tom. <laughs> and Alan Partridge for Chris. And Alan Partridge for Chris. <laughs> I've, got a feeling, I've got a feeling we might know who yours is, Chris, but maybe, maybe we're all wrong. Uh, no, you're probably all right. <laughs> <laughs> I had to uh, give an answer to something the other day and uh, almost... I think even the interviewer got a bit uh, a sort of side of what, of course it is, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> we could have filled in the gaps ourselves with this. <laughs> yes, it's Patrick, of course it is. <laughs> oh, is it Patrick? I thought it would have been someone like Richard Herndl, which is fine and lovely and fabulous because I said this impression would pop out somewhere. I didn't say where and I didn't say why, which is brilliant because <laughs> it's really out of sync and really juxtaposed to the fact that my favourite doctor is Tom Baker and I'm talking like Matt Smith. Carry on, everyone. Sorry. <laughs> Who knows, eh? Um... Oh, dear. <clears throat> Uh, I didn't realise you were here. (laughs) Yes, I'm very sorry about that, but uh, moving on. The whole reason that we're here is we're talking about the time that we two met, and this person, Chris, is getting us to talk in funny voices. Yes. It's not on, is it? No, it's not on. I should just hang on, Chris. Shut up. We're just talking. Yes, Patrick, we're not performing monkeys, are we? We We are two individual people who are, in fact, the same person, so have the same sort of... Thinking patterns, am I right? Yes, it's a, yes. It's a, I, 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 I don't know why I'm stumbling. Um, I can't think of what to say. Oh dear! I well, just keep it's... rambling as long as I keep this voice well... up. It doesn't matter what I say anymore. <laughs> well, oh, Patrick, s- since I've got you here, Patrick, do you think Matt's keeping the bow tie alive well, or is he? Of uh, course I am. A... What are you going on about? Of course I'm keeping the bow tie alive. Bow ties are cool. Well, he could have at least got a different bit of fashion sense. It's but uh, oh, hey, you. inspired from someone, you know. <laughs> Basically, this me. is how the two-ish doctors was made. We just sort of rambled <laughs> with each other until something coherent came out. <laughs> <laughs> that was a that was a bizarre yet completely totally pleasant surprise. <laughs> but, hello, sorry, oh. hello, sorry, it's me. But the most important thing <laughs> is that maybe, well, possibly, well, sorry, um. <laughs> is that maybe I might pop along and do something brilliant well I say brilliant <laughs> sorry carry on <laughs> quickly 12 save us <laughs> would you all just please shut oh, up oh <laughs> I forgot that you were here sorry so obviously uh, <laughs> the grey hair's a thing which is good good fabulous yeah brilliant well I say it's brilliant it's more different yeah yeah yeah, yeah. just keep talking I'm not listening Jesus Christ <laughs> <laughs> I love it. God, I, love this what, I cannot believe I was like this, you know. <laughs> Jesus. There's nothing. Why, Eric, why <laughs> am I so obsessed with my hair, for goodness sake? It doesn't matter about anything you keep rambling on about. <laughs> You're not <laughs> the <laughs> most brilliant person. Just, just a second. There we go. Hello. Oh, Sorry. Shut there up. we go. Brilliant. Lovely. So, there. Good. Lovely. The good thing is about my hair, which is, frankly, amazing, <laughs> is that... It's always sticking up by itself. What? Sorry, what? What? Look, look at the eyebrows. What? Look at them. You can see everything. I don't want to look at your eyebrows. 
you can see that I am really, really, really annoyed with your voice. <laughs> if I stare at your eyebrows for long enough, I think I'm going to regenerate. In fact, I think I'm turning into a biometric damper, which is, you know... What's that? that? <laughs> I don't know, let's stop. <laughs> Oh my god. So the three doctors, five doctors, two doctors, dimensions in time, uh, <laughs> time crash, day of the doctor, and this episode of Minus 10 After Party. <laughs> oh, fantastic. If, if someone could make a DVD cover for this, then I'll be very happy. Chris, uh, um, <laughs> the, we, it's yeah. time for, I think it's time for me and Chris to ask you some questions. So, uh, Chris, what's, who's your favourite doctor? And uh, can you do an impression of him for us? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, nine and no, bizarrely. Oh, oh, come on, give it a go. I'm from the same. I'm from the same neck of the woods, and I can't, for the life of me, sound like an actual Sulfordian like Chris Eccleston is. Um, which is a giant letdown. I think. Chris, I, I think, think you. I think you. I think you do a good impression of Peter Cushing, though, don't you, Chris? Uh, no, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure you do. <laughs> It's not really. It's not really impression. Just than a... do it, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! It's hang not on, hang on, at all. Chris. Chris, it, yeah? don't say anything until I'm talking to Chris Thompson. Don't say anything until Chris has done his Peter Cushion impression. <clears throat> oh God! <laughs> <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, for those listening at home, I don't <laughs> actually have one, so this is going to be an incredibly awkward part of the podcast. What I'm just going to do is say Doctor Who in a silly voice and hope that it fools the two of them. Wish me luck. <clears throat> no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. I want you to do an actual quote from the... So you can say, like... Um, I don't know. What does is, what is Peter Cushing say? Hello, I'm Doctor Who! <laughs> <It doesn't> say... <laughs> That's... Oh, my God. This guy Lambert where is did Doctor Who. Where did Christopher Biggins come from? <laughs> He's the 13th Doctor, didn't you know? <laughs> Oh, God. Dis- He's the next one along. Yeah. <laughs> Disappointed, to say the least. Oh, it's all right. It's okay. I, I, am, I am nothing if not a string of disappointments. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what my ex-wife says. So, um, <laughs> I almost don't want to ask you any more questions after we've had a cavalcade of doctors appear, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plow ahead with the couple any, okay. anyway. <laughs> so, basically, you're not going anywhere, sunshines. Um, Favourite story... Of of new series or overall? Go on, we'll make it easy. Favourite story of the original run and the current run? Um, original run, Brain of Morbius. Because it scared me as a child. It was the only one that actually made me... Yeah, it kind of sent shivers down my spine. Because it was a brain in a jar and it was all yucky. Um, <laughs> or I turned into Kenneth Williams there. <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, er, er, yes, there was a brain and a jaw, and it was very disgusting, girl. Um, <laughs> and then, of the new... Another one for our young listeners to try and figure out there. <laughs> Kenneth, Kenneth Williams is a doctor, girl. Oh, yes. Um, oh, God. And the new series run is... Ooh, that's a difficult one. Um, maybe Dalek, because that is quite iconic, because that, you know... Mm. That was the first mm. time that we saw these shiny new scary Daleks that could float and their middle section spin around, which I didn't like. Which they never did again. Have you ever seen a Dalek's middle section no. spin around since Dalek? No, they didn't. Maybe that the CGI ones twiddling themselves in the background. Yeah, they've never really done it up front ever since, have they? No. And, and they stop don't... incorporating new gimmicks because they just forget them. Well, what's <laughs> happened to the Power Rangers Daleks? Because they slow. I think Moffat's gone. Oh God, everyone hates them, and he's sort of written them out, hasn't he? He has. Yeah. It, to be honest, I've, I mean, if you play the adventure games, I mean, uh, when he had loads of them in mean, all their various colours, it made more sense. It just looked like Crayola um, <laughs> with all, one of each one standing there. Mm. But then again, so do the Daleks in the movies really <laughs> but they're they're cool they they've like got a we are the primary color daleks <laughs> hello i'm doctor who primary <laughs> color daleks you sound like Maybe. guy lambert being doctor who <laughs> it, it, that's that's because i used to during live links on television um like the first time i was ever live I'm there talking, doing lines, thinking to myself, okay, you know, you can do this, this is all right, you can get through it, it'll be right, you know, you're listening to the timings, and I've got the person counting in my ear, and then 
the background, I've got Guy just going, they'll make a Peter Cushing before a Paul McGann action figure, you know. <laughs> they'll never make Paul. Hello, I'm Doctor Who. Which obviously started to make me smile on air. <laughs> I wonder what it made the rest of the gallery feel like. They probably just wanted to... Guy doesn't work for CBBC <laughs> anymore, does he? Ah, there we go. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he broke the Peter Cushing rule of... <laughs> Section five six. Uh, Chris, how about you? What's your favourite classic story? Or what's your favourite current story? Uh, it's Peter Cushing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, classic. Uh, off the top of my head, probably Ambassadors of Death. Oh, good God! <laughs> no, I just, I just love the whole sort of. It's a conspiracy thriller meets Doctor Who, oh. and I, I just love that. I just, I, it drags on. Granted, really, I, I just, haven't noticed. Yeah, I just lo- I just enjoy it. I just I would love to see like a film adaptation of it. Um, I just think it, I find it more interesting that you know it's it's full of action. It's like watching a Bond. I film. haven't. I've watched it once, and I haven't watched it since. I haven't watched it for years. I can't even remember what happens. Is it one of those typical John Pertwee stories where there's some sort of um, cult that's trying to take over the world, and he has to stop them? No, no, it's. Um... Oh, what is it? It's, exactly. It's, you like it, but you don't know what it's about, do you? No, it's, uh, well, you've got your Quatermass sort of storyline <laughs> of alien in, that comes back, uh, they bring back uh, the Recovery 7. Programs. Oh, that's right, because I remember John and, Pertwee doing the, the television advert. Something's come back but, on Recovery 7. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> John Pertwee there, yeah, everyone. Whatever it is, it's certainly not human. That's, sorry, that's Troughton there. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, the, and then it turns out that these... Aliens are just just ambassadors, and it's uh, a mad general who's um, I think he's got some like vendetta. Or something. I don't know. I, I need to rewatch it again. I can't really. If you, I just enjoy it, right? <laughs> but it also <laughs> you can get... have you can have your 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 brain in a jar. Let me have my <laughs> three ambassadors from space. Hey, ambassadors of death was doing killer spacesuits long before the Bastion Arada as well. So yeah, that's yeah. that's a winner. How about the uh, how about the current run? What's your favourite story from this batch by Jove? Um. Oh God. Um, I think. Like, well, <laughs> come I on, Chris. Most, there's only like, ten years worth of stories to choose from. <laughs> I I know, but as it's fresh on my mind, it's definitely. Gonna say, he's gonna say. I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say. Um, in the forest of the night, aren't you? No. No. <laughs> no. You you don't understand me at all, <laughs> my dear fellow. You don't know me at all. No. Why would I? Why would I, in my all my sanity, want that episode to be the best? No. Everyone loves a solar flare. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> There's only one line out of that episode that I loved, and that was when the Doctor just turns to Clara and says. It'd be really funny if I was wrong, wouldn't it? Or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I do, oh, that's the one point of it I actually laughed. Though. <laughs> anyway, no. Um, as it's fresh on my mind, I was going to say Mummy on the Orient Express because it felt very much like a classic episode with no silly tomfoolery of uh, Tennant of, or Smith um, running about that's or true. anything. Yeah, that's quite good. It was, it was um, Capaldi, uh, you know, an elder doctor not being elder... You know, and it's just working out the mystery and then solving it. Going back to the playground again, steady on. Mm. Uh, Favourite monster, not necessarily villain, so it's more creature. Some of that don't look human by Jing. I know, I, I know who mine is. Go on then. Uh, it's the Ice Warriors for some reason. I don't know why I love it's Because them so you much. could be one, Chris. No, it's. Well, I, I, you know, my thighs aren't that small, so they probably would fit the... Uh... <laughs> I, love, I love the most redeeming feature about the Ice Warriors is they've got quite good thighs, don't you know? <laughs> i got to say, it, it, you know, it's not unflattery to be a Martian these days. Well, they may be diabolical, barbaric warriors from the Red Planet, but at least they've got a thigh gap. <laughs> <laughs> at least they've got good child-bearing hips. I, think, I, I don't know why I enjoyed them the most. I just like... I like the th- the fact that you know, see to death, they're these monsters, and then by Peladon, they're sort of a bit more sophisticated. Um, I d- I wanted more Ice Warriors than just one. So were you um, story were you bitterly the disappointed when they came back in the new series? I was excited until they opened the helmet. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you've now turned what could have been a really cool creature into effectively a generic alien mm. for use of CGI 
And uh... <laughs> well, they'd actually done a mask, an animatronic mask, hadn't they? But it was too scary, apparently. But I would have loved to have seen that. But too scary. That's the point. <laughs> it's you Doctor know, I've, Who. I've, 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 <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I, I've heard tell that it was, it was a was... practical creature up and up until a certain point in the production, and then they changed their minds about mm. uh, the approach. Uh, but all the same, I, in Cold War, it felt very much to me like the reveal in um, Independence Day, like in terms of the style they went with and the look of it. Because yeah. I'd always pictured the Ice Warriors to be quite tall and big, still, just you know, wearing the armor around themselves. Mm. But what I did, um, I, I, I do love about that episode <laughs> is the fact that. The Ice Warriors then out, so they've got the suit, but then the Ice Warriors out of the suit, and it's it's wandering about. But they should have just kept it so you can't see it, yeah, and then yeah. and then it goes reveal. back into the suit. If you know what I mean. <clears throat> it seemed like the only thing they were planning to do was to really annoy people. <laughs> it's you know they they was taking it out of the suit, and which in that you know no one really who is unaware of the Ice Warriors' existence. Is going to care what they look like out of it. Uh, this, the only people that will would be the fans who, you know, watch it. It, mm. it just seems it seems nervous. It's like Daleks sort of lost. They were quite interesting to see a bit of their mutation, but the more you saw of them, they're just like, they're not as interesting as they used to be. But on the plus side, David Warner. Um, so oh, David Warner <laughs> was fantastic, yeah. I want him to be in everything, but playing that character... <laughs> just wandering on, sweeping up, listening oh, to all I trucks. absolutely love them. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Tom? Who's your favourite monster? Who do you absolutely love? <sighs> and you're all going to sigh. I love the Daleks. <laughs> I just... I, no, we're not going to sigh. The, yeah. they, when I was... the fir- One of the first episodes I watched was the Daleks. And I don't know, they just look cool. <laughs> it's, that chi- <laughs> it's that childhood thing. It really is when, when I first watched it mm. that... They are cool and scary, and in terms of their voice, I don't think that um, they, they necessarily look scary. I think they look cool, but I think that their voice was what scared it for me. Yeah. And um, the, and their voice, especially in Resurrection of the Daleks, I don't know what it is. It's it's a bit naff, but as a kid, that yeah. that was the voice that scared me the most. I don't know why. Um, withdraw, withdraw, withdraw. I think it was just that, yeah, they sounded a little bit more human. There was less. Thank you for that impression. <laughs> That's all right. So, so yeah, it's the... it's not one of my best, I have to say. <laughs> it took him back to his childhood, Chris. That's all that matters. Um, <laughs> and as a celebration of of, of nine's year, mm-hmm. uh, two thousand five. Uh, what's your favourite story from the second series one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you got that, Chris. <laughs> yeah, it took me a moment. I was sort of like, "Oh yeah." Bar... In, in my head, it sounded a lot smarter than it was. But... <laughs> Bar the fact that Daleks, my um, my favourite episode. If I if I picked another one, it would be uh, Father's Day. Oh yes, because it's it is Doctor Who. It's got that element of an alien with it, but it's also very good drama. Like, oh, it's fantastic. it's just so well acted and. Yeah, Chris yeah. Christopher Eccleston nails the Doctor in it. He's just very... He can be funny in one bit when he's talking about, now, Rose, you're not going to cause the end of the world, are you? And then <laughs> very much like the Doctor when, you know, he sonics the key in the TARDIS. Just that tar- yeah. The shot of that TARDIS in the church when it's really slowly coming back to life, it's just... You could sum Doctor Who up in, in that shot. Mm. Guy starting to sound like Russell T. Davis now. The idea of Doctor Who being amazing is that I've all of a sudden turned more camp than I remember, but still, it doesn't matter because I'm a sort of Davis. <laughs> Father's Day, pretty big contender. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Um, Chris, how about you? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't want to say Dalek because that's obvious. I don't want to say Empty Child because that's also obvious. I, that's what, even though I really enjoyed that. Um. Aliens of London, then. Okay. <laughs> I, I was, I, I'll be honest. I was really excited when I watched Aliens of London. Yeah. I, I was, I was like, the whole concept of the not just Big Ben being destroyed, but then it, you know, the news reports and that. I was really, I remember being really excited by. It. In fact, I was on holiday, so I missed that. I missed uh, that World War and Dalek. I come back on the day Dalek was on, 
and uh, caught up with all three afterwards. And I just, I just loved them. I was, I saw the next time after and Quiet Dead, and I thought, oh, this looks so cool. And um, I've got to be honest, I thought it was absolutely brilliant when I watched it uh, first time round as a kid. What about you, Chris? Yeah, okay. Have you answered that in a previous episode? Sorry, Chris, I've cut you off. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right, nobody yeah. talk. That's fine. Nobody no. speak. We'll also apologise as tenant, and I'll forgive you and answer the question. I'm so so sorry. <laughs> Lovely work. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I'm I'm really weird, and I think I've mentioned it briefly. But well, me, yeah, uh, you have episode. mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really weird. Uh, I don't know if I've mentioned that before. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever told you, but I'm a bit straight. <laughs> um, my my favourite one from series one is is the cheapy. It's Boomtown because oh, I love okay. as more more so as a from a filmmaking perspective. I love the idea that they were like, we have no money left for a thirteenth episode. Oh bugger! Um, <laughs> give me a couple of days, and then Russell just bashes out bashes out this like simple fun idea that tackles a theme that's not really handled as much, uh, not to my knowledge, prior to that hadn't really been faced that much, which was, do you realise the consequences of your actions mm. sometimes go further than what you see before you bugger off? Mm. Like, <clears throat> this, she's been getting away with killing people, she's been setting up a pretty extreme plan, all because you didn't check that everything was fine, that all the Sladeen were gone, and then even so, like, you're not just taking her home to be on trial, you're taking her home to be brutally murdered by her own people. That make does that make you any better than mm. she is? And it, it's like wow. And then just mm. the idea of culminating that with uh, the doctor <clears throat> and and Margaret sat in the restaurant, completely inescapable that's scenario. A, that's a funny scene, isn't it? <clears throat> it's great because it starts out really funny with the you know what do you think steak and chips and all the darts and everything. Yeah. And then it just completely falls into him having to listen to her varying degrees of of kind of like her pleading for her life mm. and you know also it made cardiff iconic didn't it, it sort of it, it, yeah. it then lent car- that was almost the beginning of torchwood wasn't it because that was the first mm-hmm. bit that was set oh look we're outside the millennium center and all look there's the oval basin and all of this and well isn't isn't that why jack later on in the torchwood law like, that's why he helps set up a torchwood institute in cardiff for the rift. The rift, yeah yeah it? yeah so <clears> that he knows just... that the doctor will come back there one day at some point. Yeah, no matter so how long you know, takes. you could say that Boomtown is primarily the basis of torture, which yeah. for some people is a bad thing. But <laughs> me pers- me personally, I quite like Torchwood, so I'm 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 down with it. I'm well, I'm down with the sickness. Yo. I like I like the first two series of Torchwood, and then you get to Children of Earth, and uh, I didn't even watch most of the last one. What was the last one? Miracle uh, Day. Miracle Day. Oh, good lord. <clears throat> I'll be honest, um, that, that one suffered from the Stars Network forcing them to make ten episodes instead of five. Mm. Yeah. If, if someone out there must do a, must have done a super edit to knock it down to about three hours or something, and it, I imagine it'd be a really bloody good movie, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very long without the cutting and trimming. But I, actually, with Torchwood, I didn't like the first series. Uh, <laughs> it was the second series that yeah. I liked. I, I, I don't know. I stuck with the first one, I think by the ending, I was sort of excited because then, obviously, that's when he meets the Doctor again, when he runs off. Mm. And then Series 2 I followed, <laughs> I just enjoyed a lot more. Seri- um, Children of Earth, I, I think, is a, is superb. That's because it's got Peter Capaldi in it. Oh, not just because he's got Peter in it. <laughs> I, I, and I Nicholas loved, Briggs. I, I loved watching <laughs> it because it was a, a five-day thing, wasn't it? And it almost felt like real time. Which was more, ex- which was quite exciting. I pref- I enjoy it's that a lot more. Not, not, not to be life. confused with real time. Um, <laughs> the the yeah. god awful BBC <laughs> I animation. Here's a great animation. Yeah. We have Colin Baker in a blue coat. Yeah, all right. Fair enough. That'll get the f- they'll get the fan artwork going let's, for years. Let's make it. Everyone will watch it and they'll think we're amazing. What's that? Richard E. Grant as the Doctor and Derek Jacobi as the Master. <laughs> Yeah, why not? What shall we call it? Scream of the Shark? Sorry, this is BBC production <laughs> before the oh, series God. came back. I'll Could... be honest, I, I can't Let's stand. get this I, I, boy I called it. Stephen Moffat to write something for comic relief, but he's only a comedy writer. <laughs> he's never going to write for the actual series, so it's fine. <laughs> but 
<laughs> everyone forgets that. Everyone forgets that Stephen Moffat wrote Curse of Fatal Death, which is, you know, no, every I'll do, I'll cliche. <laughs> well, they think, you know, oh, there's not enough comedy in Doctor Who. Well, you know, Stephen Moffat wrote Planet of the Tursarans, the bottom burpers or whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that, Stephen. Great. <laughs> Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. It's a guilty pleasure for me. But <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I find it really. Rowan, funny. At, Rowan Atkinson and Paul McGann's wig. What more do you want? <laughs> I like. That makes I like his head the, cannon. I like the idea that Paul McGann was still wearing it, and then they had to prise it off his head to put it on. <laughs> Rowan Atkinson. Yeah. They're going to call me at some point, right? And it's like, yes, Paul. We're just borrowing it, Paul. We will give it back to they're you. Good, they're going Which... to say, don't take my hair away from me. Whatever you do, don't take my hair away. <laughs> okay, Paul. <laughs> okay, before we accidentally slip into another multi-doctor adventure I was, starring... I was, I was just going to say, I said boob tail. When I'm, I remember the first time I watched it, I was quite disappointed. Um, oh. I think it's, it's the next time trailer which ruins it. Because it sets up this brilliant idea of... There's a nuclear power station right at the heart of Cardiff City that's going to, you know, cause mass problems. And I, met, I you know, I, I was speculating, that, oh, God, this, this bait, this, you know, focus on a nuclear pla- uh, power plant going into meltdown is going to be really tense. Mm. I, I imagine them running around trying to stop it. <laughs> um, no, we're sitting in a restaurant. <laughs> um, which, um, looking back, which I'm, it's the next episode I'm doing, I'm, I'm watching, because I'm obviously watching Eccleston this year. Um, I'm about to watch it again, and I think I, well, I will enjoy it more. Because, I watched because it recently, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, there is some, there's some good moments. It's the, yeah, I think it was, it's the next time trailer set it up for something it wasn't, mm. and I was very disappointed. But I tell you, the one thing that was probably the more sort of, oh, God, really sort of anticlimactic, was the ending, having the next time trailer revealing the cliffhanger of fucking Bad Wolf. <clears throat> oh, yeah, no, yeah, right at the I, end, I was, I was like, oh... Thanks for ruining the fact that the Daleks are coming back. Now I'm really just going to be sitting through the whole episode wondering when are the Daleks coming. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Lovely. Yeah, I was going to add, and to end this episode, I just want to reveal that the Daleks will be featuring in the next episode of Nine is Ten because we're doing Dalek. But as for this Look week's at that. Party, that was almost like a, it was planned. A. a it wasn't, a, but it a. was. But Who's it your, um, are you allowed to say who your special guest is yet? Uh, yeah, I can announce. I can announce for this next one. We're delving into the mind of what it was like for somebody who was younger than us, who didn't know what the show was when it came back, and his first impressions. It is this week a special guest in the most cheapest sense. <laughs> it's my brother Toby joining me for dark. Oh, Ow, you cop out. <laughs> hey, he's the only one of us who has a nine-year-old's perspective of watching that episode go out when it did. So, hey, do you hey. class? However, do you class mental age because. <laughs> Well, in that case, I was at least four when we watched it go out. <laughs> yeah, but, I, but, I can, but I can reveal that we may have an extra special guest for our Dalek after party, but I shall say no more. As for special guests this week, though, it's as Jeffrey far as I'm Beavers. concerned, it, it's Jeffrey Beavers. As far as I'm concerned, <laughs> the most special you, of you've guests... You've literally been... Once, once you gave away the contact details, you were emailing while we were recording, weren't you? Guys, I've already <laughs> written... After the show's finished, I've already written an idea for uh, a, a film based on Jeffrey Beavers' life. <laughs> <laughs> With Jeffrey Beavers playing himself at his current age... Uh, and Chris Johnson playing Jeffrey Beavers as a young man. So, <laughs> yeah, on that note... <laughs> on that note, please, everybody... Tommy, it's the next adventure in space and time, isn't it? <laughs> let's, get, Everyone... da- let's get David Bradley as Jeffrey Beavers. Yes. Roger Delgado is uh, obviously not with us anymore, and uh, we need to... We can't just I already, know, I already know who would play Roger Delgado, and that's Noel Edmonds, anyway... <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, very quickly, please give my guests a lovely, invisible, over the internet, a warm round of applause and thank you. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, Tom, for joining me this week. Thank you. No problem. Sorry. Uh, and thanks to Patrick and Matt and Peter and David and, and a very brief Paul and Jeffrey Beavers and all the other wonderful people we had here tonight on my Christmas You're very special. very welcome, Chris. <laughs> no problem at all. Thank you. See you much. later, yes, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. See you later, Chris. I don't usually uh, condone gratitude, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that'll have to do. 
Sums it up. Goodbye, see you next everyone. week. We'll see you all very soon. <laughs> Good God.